This is Pranam Guha Thakurta from Edu TV, the first education channel dedicated to uplift education in Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, Middle East, and Africa in our favorite program, Schools and University Connect. Our guest today is Dr. Anjali Sharawa from Shushant University. I'll just speak a bit about Dr. Anjali Sharawat. She's an alumna of JNU. Dr. Anjali Sharawat is a dynamic personality who teaches politics and international relations to law students. She also heads the Cultural Committee of School of Law, Darpan, as the coordinator of the committee. She has immensely facilitated students to commence various programs for the disadvantaged and underprivileged, making them more solicitous about the welfare of society. Ms. Sharawat has completed her MA from the Center for Political Studies and MPhil and PhD from the School of International Studies, both from Jawaharlal Nehru University. She has qualified UGC net exam political science in 2010. Her PhD thesis is titled Ethno-Regional Divide and Political Transformation in Kyrgyzstan, 1991 to 2011. She has worked for almost four years as a senior researcher for the QEM, Qatar Unified Imaging Project, funded by the Qatar Foundation in association with University of Exeter, UK. She has presented a paper at a prestigious platform like American Association of Geographers, AAG, Chicago, US. She has consistently presented papers in steamed universities like Jamia Milia Islamia, JNU, and DU. She has also worked on a United Nations project in the capacity of consultant researcher, socio-economic impact study of COVID-19, UN Women India in the year 2020. Thank you so much, ma'am, for taking out and joining us to help the students. Over to you, Dr. Sherawa. Sir, I am overwhelmed with this kind of introduction. Thank you so much for welcoming me on this platform. And uh, as uh, you've already introduced the topic and the rules are known to the students. So let me just, you know, give and give a brief about, uh, you know, as we all know that India is, uh, you know, uh, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi this time contained a suitcase when he came back from Indonesia, the gavel of the G20 uh, presidentship, right? So it is the symbol of honor for all of us. And as we will be presiding over the world's premier forum for uh, global economic cooperation, and uh, it also signifies responsibility and uh, an unprecedented opportunity for India's leadership to shape the international response to pressing challenges. So this is the time when India can step forward and transition from being a rule taker to a rule maker. So uh, India has already you know, shown uh, that India is an important um, uh, state when uh, it was negotiating the Bali declaration of the just concluded G20 summit. And India has already been uploaded for, uh, you know, uh, for Prime Minister Modi's statement that this era must not be a war. And uh, India will be holding 200 meetings in 35 different sectors in multiple locations across India. And uh, in today's forum, we hear it from our students, the young generation, the leaders of tomorrow about G20 and India's role. So I'm impressed. To the young students, and I request Shivangi. I'm uh, saying we have got a lot of expectations from you because Shivangi spoke pretty well on uh, Mr. Rishi Sonak. Over to you, Shivangi. Vasudeva Kutumbakam, one earth, one family, one future. India's transformation from a participant to a regulator is being witnessed. Countries will attend the meeting in the nation known as the mother of democracy. And together they will form a G20, a force for change on a worldwide scale. India emphasized the most important problems and concerns regarding the world's resources. It was cited 
that the sense of ownership over natural resources is the root of cause of contemporary conflict. India's participation in these groupings stems from, from its understanding that while participation in groupings were regional in nature, based on geographical continuity, while newer groupings will span across regions based common interests. Our issue is what will be the outcomes? We have to look at the baton that is handed over to us. Now for the safe future of the planet, the sense of trusteeship is the solution. Life, that is lifestyle for environment uh, campaign can make a big contribution to this. A G20 gathers, India sets to raise global South issues. Its purpose is to make sustainable lifestyle as the mass movement of the global South. Over the next one year, we will strive to ensure that the G20 acts as a global prime mover to envision new ideas and accelerate collective action. India is adamant that women's participation is necessary for global progress. As put forward that the greatest development of our time is the digital transformation. And at the, de and at the technologies, when used properly, they may be helpful for the world's long decade struggles against poverty. Digital climate change solutions such as uh, paperless green offices and remote working eras of conflict. India will maintain a firm grip on the G20 chair while being inclusive, ambitious, and resolute. Thank you. So the fourth speaker who we had uh, was Shivangi. Shivangi again, uh, you know, gave a nice introduction and focused more on India's role. India because the title of the topic, uh, uh, the title was that India's role in G20. So she focused uh, that India is going to be the president this year, uh, India's leader. And uh, she even spoke about region-based region common interest. She spoke about global South issues uh, about which, uh, about which Adwat has already mentioned about the environmental issues. And, uh, she talked about women participation and the outlook of G20 from India's perspective. She, talk, she spoke about the important issues like poverty, climate, and India's role. So we have had wonderful speakers, good orators, you know, wherein each speaker tried to talk about, I think more or less all the issues are covered. Because, you know, when we talk about G20, it is a premier forum for international economic, social and political cooperation, which is representing 85% of the global GDP right. and over 75% of the worldwide trade. And we all know that we this, this forum constitutes about two thirds of the world population. Yes. And uh, having this presidency for the coming year is very, very important. And um, India is, is going to be holding so many meetings, working on several issues as mentioned by all of you. So that's me summing up your speeches.